When the market tanked, I can tell you these experienced veteran seasoned agents did not know how to deal with it. And they didn't know how to deal with clients. They kept saying, well, you know, um, you know, Brown Brothers went belly up and the stock market crashed. But they didn't understand how to explain what was going on in the real estate market. And I'm going to show you by using very simple data how to have those conversations and why Remax Leading Edge will know when the market starts to soften and when the market starts to stabilize. All right. I can tell you that I followed this for a long time. When the market started to crash in 2004, Five. I know everyone will tell you it was 2006, but that's a national number. Here, I can still tell you the, the Sunday in May when I went in going, oh my God, I underpriced this house. I just sold something yesterday, which was not as nice for more money. Than, and I was a wreck because we weren't used to, even in 2004 and five, we didn't have bidding wars like we have now. The prices were pushed, but nothing like today. I had a heart attack. It's underpriced. Well, the market will take care of it. I believe in macro 101, the market dictates price. And at the end, we had a million people at the open house and it didn't sell. It didn't sell the next week. And that was the beginning of things not selling. And about six months later, you know, we were all scrambling. I had agents losing listings and they were saying things like, I don't know why it's not selling. Well, you've got to know why. You can never ever say to a client, you do not know why it's selling. So one day, the Boston Globe picked up and said, Linda, we've been talking to some agents, and everyone's telling us the market is not softening. And I responded, anyone who's telling you the market isn't softening is a liar, which wasn't really. Anyway, I got on the front page of the Globe. <laughs> but you know, the fact is it was true, but people were afraid to admit it. And by the way, it's going to happen again. My guess is in. 20, 21, 22, somewhere, we're going to have a softening. Right now, how many times the Fed has already said, how many times are interest rates going to go up this year? Five. Four. Four to five times. Yeah. I've heard both. They've announced it. Let's remember one crucial fact. For every 1% interest rate goes up, every 1%, your buying power actually goes down 12%. Yeah. We say 10 because it's an easy round number to do it. For every, so if interest goes up 1%, your buyer's borrowing power, in other words, if they could afford a $600,000 mortgage, they can only afford 540. That's powerful. And if we're not thinking about that in advance, that's crazy. So that's the first thing that's going to put the brakes on. And we got to be able to monitor it. So I want everyone to, to, let's go to this chart. And I just want you to understand what absorption rates are, okay? Absorption rates, very simply, are the number of houses sold. So here it is. Say last, we can't do March yet, so in February. Say in the town of Winchester, 25 houses sold, and there are uh, 50 actively on the market. Our absorption rates are 50%. That's a simple proportion. It could be vice versa. In the town of Winchester, 50 houses sell, only 25 on the market, what's our absorption rate? 200%. So it's sold versus... It, it, it's how many sold divided over, divided, divided how many on the market. It's a very simple proportion. Okay. Joanne. So when you say sold, you mean... I you mean closed. 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 Is it, we don't, you can actually do absorption rates for under, but we don't. But the basic thing is how many sold versus how many active. So Right. Well, those are still active. They are considered active. Okay. What's okay. the time period that we're looking at? Within a month, within a 30 days? Uh, no, every, we do it every 30 days. So if you're looking for the absorption rates in uh, February, you have to wait till March 1 to get them. So we should probably have our office admins be sending that yes, out. Yes, some of the admins are starting to come to these classes very specifically so they can help you. Great. Um, some of these things are in the housing report. But I want you to understand what's going on. Back when Debbie Miller spoke to me and people didn't want a listing in Linfield, do you know why? There were, uh, let's see, I think it was seven years of inventory in some price brackets. Seven years of inventory. Wait, that, what does that mean? Does that okay. mean houses are on the market for seven years? No, no, no. Um, I, I was going to get to that later. But what, what does months of inventory mean? Does not mean how long it takes to sell. 
months of inventory, and we're going to go through the charts in a little bit, months of inventory is based on last year's sales. If we sold 40 houses between six and seven hundred thousand dollars last year, and I have 20 on the market, I have six months of inventory. Does that make sense? Yep. So in other words, it's, okay, we'll try again. If I sold 12 houses, it's months. If I sold 12 houses last year between 500 and 600, and I have one on the market now, I have one month of inventory. Right. Does that make sense? So your absorption rate can either be by the or, or by Months of inventory is different than absorption rate, but you'll see that they correlate later. All right. So at the end of today, I want you to understand sales trends. I want you to pinpoint when George bought his house, when did you buy your house, George? 99. For 1999, mm -hmm. we can actually look at what happened in 1999 and point. find out exactly how much more George's house is worth today empirically. Now, it doesn't mean, I don't know what updates he did. Maybe he bought a total fixer-upper and he's done kitchen, so it's going to be worth more if it's gorgeous and sexy. Or maybe he bought a sexy, gorgeous house and has done nothing for the last 19 years, in which case it's not even going to be worth as much because he bought a sexy house and now it's tired. Or improved it, yes. Right. Yeah. Or didn't improve it. Over, yeah, over or, or, but you could also underimprove, like you could yeah. do nothing. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about how, this is really a pricing class. So right now I want you to look at absorption rates, all right? So if your absorption rates are between zero and nine percent or single digits, we generally say the market is crashing. It's not softening. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when, market, when your absorption rates are eight percent, that means you're only selling eight compared to a hundred active listings. That is crashing. If they're kind of in the teens, 10 to 17 percent, we usually say it's softening softening more at 10% than at 17. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This 18 to 25%, that's a stable market. When you're absorbing basically one in five houses, 20%, when you're in there, that's when there's a balance between the buyer and the seller. Equal leverage. The buyers don't have the advantage. It's not a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. It's a stable balanced market. Anybody remember the market of 2012? That was the last, it was when it was recovering. You'd have bidding wars on some houses that were priced really smart, but not all, hardly all of them. Some things were sitting on the market that were overpriced. And you never felt like the, the seller wanted that buyer still, because there weren't a lot of people in the queues. Uh, and then it, the market starts to get warmer. When it's between 26 and 35 percent, prices are rising. That's when demand gets hard. When you're basically a third, when you're selling one third of your inventory, that is a rising market. And then it gets really warm at 36 to 59 percent. And then you start to see absorption rates. Until 2014, I had never seen absorption rates over 60 percent in my life. Not even in the last big. That's crazy. And now you're looking at Arlington at 120 percent absorption rates. That's craziness. So let's actually start to look at those. All right. Let's look at absorption rates. I want everybody to go to the. Everyone's on my IMAX site. Mira, you can be on your own. Just pull up your site. And I want you all to go to reports. See the reports at the top. See the closing rate by month on the left. Is everyone on closing rate by month? Uh, I want you to open that up. Um, let's pick a town we don't know that well. Let's, who, who's doing a CMA someplace? Brockton. Brockton. I know nothing about Brockton. So these are the absorption rates in Brockton last year versus this year. So Brockton's pretty warm. Why? Because it's still affordable in greater Boston, right? Um, so we're looking at last month. 34% absorption rate. So where's that fall in our list? It's prices are rising. They're not like crazy big appreciation, but they're coming up. They're bubbling up. The units are, that are currently for sale right now are averaging 100, 193 days on market. But look at this stat. Over here on the sold, the ones that actually went under agreement averaged 78 days on market. Do you understand the difference? The ones that are sitting on the market now are sitting, they're averaging 193 days on market. And look at the price points. I mean, 
if you hadn't thought about it, when's the last time I saw anything for 275? <laughs> you know, but interesting. So other things that you can see in this chart that I just love is, um, you know, you're looking at your sale to list price and you're looking at your days on market. But what I want to tell you is don't ever isolate one month. One month is not a trend, right? Just because you have great, like, oh, here they had 52% absorption rates. Linda, that's big appreciation, but it was for one month. If you don't have at least three months, watch the trends. You don't have data. It's just not enough. So make sure you always have three months to really see where the market is going. Is it coming up or going down? See? You're not usually used to going into Back Bay. So let's do this. Let's go to areas here. So I'm going to call up areas. And you'll see that I can see Boston Back Bay right here on the top. So now I can get the back bay stats. Now, there are no hardly any single families. Everything is a condo, right? So you're going to have to change that to condo. Everyone got here, condo? Okay, let's run the stats on what's going on in back bay. Very interesting. The average sale to list price on a back bay condo is only 77.6%. Now, some people are, are pricing them right, but it's such a norm to be overpriced. Also, you'll find in higher price markets, when you're selling things for two, three, four million, you can be off by three or four hundred thousand dollars. That's what's going on, which doesn't happen with a two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar house. All right. Um, also, average days on you uh, for a condo in Back Bay is one hundred and five, but only thirty for the ones that are selling. Always, that's the difference in price. So the average sale price in Back Bay is one four four nine. The, uh, uh, that's for sale. The sold price is 1125. That's 77.6%. By the way, this is the last known list price, not the original price. So my guess is it's actually lower than 77%. You go to a Melrose or a Arlington, there are no price reductions. <laughs> you know, so those are really true. Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's look in Arlington. So we're looking at absorption rates of only 28%. So say that again if they have for the year. Reduction. Um, what I'm saying is that these prices, the average for sale prices in the market, are um, the most recent sale price. They don't say what the original price was. Okay. Single families in Arlington, towns. I'm going to uncheck all because I don't want Brockton in there anymore. And I'm going to go to Arlington. I'm going to hit run report. All right, so look at my absorption rates in Arlington. One, last December, the absorption rates, I give near 266%. Wow. There's, there's no inventory. Mon you can correlate to this to months to inventory. That month, let's see, there was uh, 0.4 months of inventory. That's in all price bands. Nothing. So overall, months of inventory for the year have averaged less than a month. The average sale price is 107.2%. Now, what's interesting, um, Katja Pitts was just talking about what her, she went and found her sale to list price ratio and compared to the town she sells and found that she was selling 4 to 5 percent above the town averages on her listings. Isn't that a great sale or a great piece of information? He meant it seriously. He, they're in markets that are so hot that they don't even see them. By the way, when absorption rates are way down, everybody does one because they can. There's no competition to drop the, the claws. All right, so everyone got to kind of handle how you can see it this way. Let's show you how I, um, you can pull these up, but let's show you a chart that's really great for when you're meeting with buyers or sellers. I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to show you absorption rates just from another angle. Return again, and I'm going to go here to a closing rate chart. And now I'm going to do this for single families in Arlington again. So. You can see that we're absorbing more. Okay, this is the active inventory in the back. And you can't even see how active it is. It's below this line. We are, it's just so heavy. This is, this is not a normal chart. Let me show you a normal chart. Let me show you a more normal market. Okay, just, it's just, it's just, this, I, I've never seen anything like it. So here's kind of a more staple market. We have to go to bizarre places like I'm going to go return. Let's go, I'm going to do the same closing rate chart. I'm going to uncheck all so I'm not with anybody else. And I'm going to go to, I don't know. Belchertown. You want to go to Belchertown? Let's go to Belchertown. 
This is how many active properties are on the market, and these are the people who successfully sold. The purple? The purple. All right. This is normal, by the way. By, by the way, Belcher Town, yes, these are normal markets. Belcher Town is just starting to stabilize. All right. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what are these people doing that these people aren't? Well, they're listing with Remax Leading Edge, obviously, right? Yeah. However, um, let's just say that the way you want to set this up, and this, by the way, we're going to see these charts in our markets in a couple of years. It, it might be not this dramatic, but maybe not in Arlington, maybe it'll only be 40% absorption rates. But it's going to feel a lot slower. I know when I had those panic phone calls, we did open houses and we didn't get offers. Right. Oh my God, the market is crashing. We didn't sell it in seven days. <laughs> you know, what's going on? Um, so this is really important because when you're with a seller, you say, these are the uh, properties that were accepted by the sellers. These are the properties that were rejected by the, seller, uh, by the market, by the buyers. Who wants to be rejected? This is how you get people to price correctly. It's really important that you understand. These are perfectly stable, 15, 27, 21. Yeah, these are right in. This is a stable, healthy market. No advantage to buyer or seller. That's what it's supposed to look like. That market we saw before of, of Arlington, and then if you called up Melrose or you called up Cambridge, same thing. It's crazy. Red hot. But don't expect it to last forever. Let's check out the months of inventory in Belmont. So now the great thing is I can see what's going on in every price brand. We have one month of inventory. So let me tell you that months of inventory directly correlates, see on my little chart, to, the, to, the, um, to our absorption rates. Big appreciation. Yeah, right, right, big, right, or less. In some months, let's see, um, in some areas, in some price brands, you have zero. Right? right now, you're out of luck if you want anything in town between 9 and 1-1. One, one. There's nothing. Zero. You know, that cra so the next house that comes on is going to have demand. So this is what you need to know is there's a whole bunch of great things to see in these charts too. First thing I want to point out is where's the sweet spot of Belmont? Where are the buyers? Because you need to know where the buyers are. And if you're listing in Belmont right now, between five and six. By the way, there wasn't a sold listing there. Are you gonna take a listing if there don't seem to be ever any buyers? Right now, there hasn't been a buyer in Belmont over four in the last year. And we got two houses, one between four and four, five, and one between five and six. And we, there's no sales data. So maybe it really is worth it. But look at, there also weren't any sales over two, five. We only had, you know, or, Three, five, I'm sorry. You had one last year here. These are important things to note. So all, see all this busyness right here? Uh, between 800 and 1-2, that's your sweet spot, or 1-3. Mm -hmm. That's where all the buyers come. If you have money, you go there. It's why when people want to price their house in Melrose for 1-3, we're not, people don't look there. They're looking in Belmont and Winchester. They're not even in the search criteria. You need to understand that. People are looking at Belmont, Winchester, Lexington at that price point. So that's uh, a majority of your listings, if you add it up, 18 plus 23 plus 16 plus 15 plus 16, you know, compared to 138 listings, that's a majority of them. That's where the buyers are. We're going to be the office that understands how to talk to clients when everyone else is going, I don't know why it doesn't, it's not selling. And we're going to be going, are you kidding? The absorption rates are 7%. Months of inventory are eight months. That's why it's not selling. If you are not, you know, it's like a checkout line. Only three people are going to get through, but if there are 12 people in line before they close, the other ones aren't going to get through. There's several things that happen here. Anybody sell a house to somebody? When, anybody sell a house when there was only, recently when there's only one offer? You're afraid to tell the buyer. You, you, want, you don't want them to know there wasn't another offer. I have seen such bad buyer agency that they come in, 40,000 over asking, and there's not another offer. Like that's bad agency. Red <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so 
you know, you're, you, this is a chance to really use this information in a way that is super important. We're going to start to look at this stuff. So we've got these months of inventory, but let's look, go back to our example of Belchertown. Yeah, they've got 4.8 months of inventory. Let's see. If the house is between four and uh, four fifty, they have seventeen months of inventory, because that's a high price in Belchertown. Mm -hmm. People don't go there for the market um, as much. Well, ten houses did sell there last year in that price point. So, but they have fourteen on the market. This is year over year. All right, so let's go to uncheck all. I'm in Holyoke. Let's go to Lynn. Well, last year, the average multifamily in Lynn was purchased for four ten. And this year they're selling for 470 a year later. Pretty cool thing to know about Lynn multifamilies. And by the way, I want to sell it, but it's not in the year 2017. I want to sell it in the year 2011. So I'm going to go 2010 to 2011. Does everyone understand what I'm doing here? Gone to Lynn. And now let's find out what happened to my multifamily that I bought in Lynn in 2005. Let's see, I bought it for 390. The current period is 188. They're down 201,000 or 51.7%. Should I put it on for 350? No. But how cool is that? If you go to the data deed, you can go back and know exactly what the market was like for any listing. And I think the data goes back to 1999. We're going to Danvers, baby. We're going to Danvers and we have to go to a single family. So if I'm going to do something, Danvers. So what has happened since Actually, I can only do it since 2002. The market was going up because yeah. it, it stabilized in 1996 after the crash in 92, and it was steadily going up. We had steady appreciation. It didn't get crazy at the end of 2003. So it went up a little bit more than this. But right now, the average sale price in Danvers, which in 2002 was 289, is now 447, or it's up 54%. George has been there a little bit longer. My guess is he's 58% or so. Single family. Single family. Now that's just a base. Yeah. I don't know about George's house. Like I said, if he bought a complete fixer upper and he put equity in, but if he did that, if he put that brand new kitchen in 1999 when he bought it, what are his cabinets? Oh, Oak. Oak. What's, what's, his, what's, his, uh, what's his <laughs> What's his countertops? Formica. They're Formica. Yeah. They might have been in 99 Corian, Ooh. right? Right? Isn't that what they would be? And he's got a pink tile floor. <laughs> I'm just telling, I, mean, I don't know what's going really on. Green. But I'm saying, a green, that's great. It could be, that's right. Forest green was really big then. So if that was the case and he hadn't done anything, even though he thinks in his mind he has updated everything, we know he's 19 years behind. Now, good news, George bought a house that was in really great shape. He didn't do anything, but he has that older house. Now he's going to go on the market. Now we're going to paint his cabinets, put in the quartz, make all the hardware, silver, brushed nickel, satin, you know, chrome, whatever. Those are the things we're going to do and change the light fixtures and we'll have a sexy new house. But this is an amazing opportunity to look at any listing. Again, the data is only good because remember, we weren't on the internet before 2001. I know this is hard for some of you to imagine, uh, but we still had books and MLS and things like that. Who's some agent that nobody knows or even particularly cares for that doesn't do any business? We need a name. Uh, she doesn't do anything? Okay, so agent sales activity. When? Oh, Ashford. I can spell that. Okay, let's find Wendy. Um, at Ashford Realty or Caldwell yeah. Banker? Yes. All right, let's see what Wendy's been up to. I'm going to run the report. I'm going to know everything about Wendy. Ready? Yeah. These are important things. I, I went to agent sales activities. Okay, so right now, Wendy has nothing at, oh, she has one active. Well, hold on, we're getting everything. Wait a minute. So here's 151 Dean Street, Belmont. She's got on the market. She has no, nothing contingent, nothing under agreement. And last year, she sold two houses. And her sale to list price ratio is 93.94%. And her days on market is 30.5. Let's check in, man, all right? Because she won't mind if we. All right. Ann, I'm capitalized. 
Ann Man, what has Ann been up to lately? That slacker? Okay. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We know she's busy. Right now, the slacker only has one listing, right? She's, but she does have, uh, geez, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things under agreement for $5.297 million worth of under agreement. And in the last year, this is what Ann has sold. All right? That's it. So she has 38 total sides, 35 units for 32 million. Her average sale to list price is 106.98%. But look at this. Her days, this is important stuff. Her, her days on market is 13.29. Now let me tell you where you're screwing up your days on market. It, uh, let's go through what contingency means and what under agreement means. All right. If you mark something contingent, your days on market continue to run. Not only that, if you market contingent, you're saying you're showing it for backup. If you're not prepared to show it for backup, do not market contingent. If your seller is like, I'm done, let's go through the clean, you know, let's go through home inspection, you are not to market, that's the rules. Do not market contingent unless you plan to show for backup. Here, if I was Ann Mann, we already know that her sale to list price ratio is about the same, it's almost exactly the same as it is in Arlington, that, right? But let's, this is what I would do if I was Ann and I was gonna do a promotional piece. And I wanna know what is the sale to list price ratio? Does anyone remember where we found that before? I'm gonna compare how Ann is doing uh, by county. Middlesex, right? So we're going to hit Middlesex, but you all should be doing this. How do you compare? Or pick the other nine towns you sell in, and you can run the sale to list price ratio with that combination of towns. The average sale to list price ratio is 94.8%. and is averaging almost 107%. As a result, her people are getting, uh, what do you got, five and seven, 12% more. That's killer stats. Everybody in this office, that's why you mark your stuff under agreement, right when you can, as soon as you can, and it's safe for the seller when you're not gonna be selling it contingency, and you want these stats. Look at your own. It's okay if you only sold one house and it sold way over asking, you got great stats. <laughs> but rookie mistakes is people overprice and then they sit on the market, and now you got crummy stats out of the gate. You want to protect those stats. Here's the other thing that I see go wrong. You've got an overpriced listing. Your seller doesn't want to reduce it. I, I'm sitting on this house because my seller knows it's worth 600. Knows it. I had recommended we put it on for 549. He would not. George brings me an offer of 535. The seller knows, hey, you said to put it on for 549, let's take it. What just happened to your sale to list price ratio? Horrible. You killed it. But that's not only it. You know what you've also done? What, wait, before we take George's offer, 435, <coughs> let's put it down to 549 and see. And then the next thing you know, we have another offer and it goes for 560. Right. We see it happen all the time. You have to be strong. Does that make sense to everybody? Right. So don't, if you've got, you know, the sellers go, just sit, send me an offer. No, they don't come when it's not priced. Pricing is everything. Let me tell you the Linda Okineski method of pricing. <laughs> it takes about 10 minutes. Right. You look at your house. How are the kitchens? How are the baths? How sexy on a scale of one to 10? Is it painted? You know, do you like it? Then you look at every single thing in MLS and go, is this neighborhood better or worse? Okay, for the price. Well, my neighborhood's better and the house is the same, so I'm worth more. Okay. This house has a way better kitchen and a better yard, and the neighbors are the same. Oh, my house is less than that. This, you just compare to the active listings. Where do I fit? Compared to, I, if another house is offering more than I can offer and is better, and I try to put my house priced higher than that, it won't sell. But you do comparison. <clears throat> it is comparison. Because why, but why do I do that? How do the buyers Because that's what buyers do. I'm a recent seller. I've sold in the last year. My house was assessed for 865. I put it on for 1289. Everyone thought I was crazy. But I do I am good at pricing. And then I did every shameless thing that you do, and I wound up with 1368. I want to tell you what Zillow did. 
the minute I put it on for one, two, eight, nine, right. they upped their Zillow yep. like that to pretty close to my asking price, below it. I thought that's, that's really interesting. And then guess what happened to the Zillow Zestimate when I sold? It went right up to my sale price. How do you price it? Here's the problem. If that house is really, really worth 170 in Brockton, I mean, really worth it all day long, it might not be necessarily the right thing because at 270, those people don't have an extra $20,000 to right. spend. You're right. So it's a different mentality than when you're listing in Belmont or Lexington or Winchester. You you might need to ask 2699 if it's. The thing is, you've got to know that it's better than everything else they can get. If not, keeping at a strategic price under 250 makes tons of sense. Yeah. How are we feeling about absorption rates? Right? Okay, so just kind of quickly, absorption rates are 25%. Don't look at your thing. About how many months of inventory might we have? 25 percent Four. One. No. Five, three, six. Yep, five, six, yep. Yep. I, just to kind of, I want you to start to think. So my, uh, my absorption rates are 7%. How many months of inventory might I have? Yeah. yeah, easy. Easy, easy. I want to tell you that in 2011, I had a really like the priciest house in Melrose. And I remember looking at the absorption rates for buyers. Um, anything over a million, and that included Lexington, Winchester, all of Middlesex County. You know what our absorption rate was? Four percent over a million. You couldn't unload. Winchester was dying. They couldn't move stuff over a million dollars. And now you can't. You, you don't even think to move there unless you have a million dollars. Things change really, really fast. Essex County, the absorption rate for anything over a million dollars, and they have all that waterfront property. Two percent over a million dollars. So. Do you all understand how you're armed with this data? You can know if you looked at the last three months. Now, I have sat down on listing presentations and gone over this. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, these are the absorption rates, the months of inventory. And what they say, if you can call them up on your iPad or your computer, is we want to move to Newburyport. Tell me what's going on there. I just sold a condo. There you go. Right? Yeah, Mary just sold a condo up there. Uh, Mary, so Mary, you're one of my favorite stories about IMAX. And, in the beginning, would it be fair to say you struggled a little bit about all the data? It says very fair. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now, tell me how you use it. Okay, so it's um, a call on a um, Zillow pre-foreclosure, and um, it's already scheduled, and they are in a position that they could probably afford it, um, but it's too late. So um, in order for me to put on the market as a short sale, you know, I have all these. The guy thinks it's worth a certain amount of money in times. How much does he think it's worth? Talk, go ahead. He thinks it's worth five fifty, and um, he's maybe five twenty-five. But the problem is, um, I'm probably going to be able to stall the um, foreclosure for a few months. So, to, uh, days on the market with IMAX is average of one eighty-three. I think um, I don't have it in front of me, but one eighty-three. So I use the charts to get him to price aggressively at like 499 so we can get it under agreement, maybe even get 510 or 515 if he, you know, he doesn't have time to sit and wait like the rest of the market because it will go into foreclosure. So the charts made him price it correctly. That's a backwards scenario, you know, where it can work the other way too, uh, depending on the market. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, how, and because you've been looking at the data, what's your um, I, He's at probably 2.5. On a very good day. On a very good day. And um, his payoff is 3.2. So, um, you know, <laughs> again, I used it the other way around because these are for people that are going into foreclosure. So I used the charts to get them to get the sense of urgency, not just by, you know, um, uh, date that you're going to foreclose, but also how many days are average on the market in the towns that you're in. You know, we're not, they're not in Arlington, they're not in Melrose, they're in Mashpee, they're in Truro, they're, you know, so the charts, when they see it clearly with a chart, it makes sense to them. So I use them all the time. I'm going to ask you from now on when you go into anything, so there's more information here. Here's closing rate by month, here's a definition. Closing rate charts, 
So they're all here. The sales trends, price appreciation or drop between two time periods. What does months of inventory mean? Does everyone remember? Can anyone here give me a definition without looking of months of inventory? How long it takes to sell the number of properties that are on the market? No, no. Anything 60 above. No. no. What's months it? of inventory are how many months it'll take to sell what's on the no, no okay, you're closer. Okay, months of inventory is how long it would take to empty out the inventory if nothing else came on the market. In other words, based on past sales. That's what I meant. It doesn't take, mean how long it takes to sell anything, right? That has nothing to do with it. How long would it take to empty the inventory if nothing else came on that price band? Give, given the history and how many buy, based on how, what sold previously, exactly. And agent sales activity, how fun is that? Look yourself up. So Brenna, as a marketing coordinator, you could give this to all of our agents and then position them. If the Sell Boston team is selling things at 101% and South Boston is selling at 87%, they've got a kick-ass stat there that they can use. Days on market, same thing. So I want you to embrace it and use it. It takes amazing confidence to get something priced right. What's the other phenomenon we see going on in the market is that people are pricing just right. Like, I can cop this all day long at 115, right? Mm -hmm. I can cop it. However, because everyone thinks it's going to go for 125, the buyers are hesitating to make an offer because we pushed the price. Mm -hmm. So now they're thinking, and it really isn't worth more than that. So now we've created a mentality that's backfiring on us, buyers expect to pay way over asking. And now if you price it right at the top of the range, you don't bring the buyer below and go, well, that doesn't make sense because it's going to go way higher. So we're, it's feeding itself now. So I also want to tell you that you can get data on MLS PIN and, you, and on um, the Greb site. I don't think it's nearly as good as what we've got here. There are some interesting stats, but it doesn't allow you to manipulate it and find out what you want in each individual town. But the stuff is here if you need it.